Chet TV's studios in British Columbia. This is Chet TV News with Marlon Gomez. Hello and welcome to Chet TV News. I'm Marlon Gomez. We begin here in Chetwin. Don Titus Elementary School rallied up their grade two, three, and four students for a cause which will change the lives of people in Ethiopia. Have a look. For many of us here in Canada, access to drinking water is fairly simple and requires very little effort. Sadly, that's not the case in parts of Ethiopia. Don Titus Elementary School teacher Brenda Key went to a summer camp this past year in Ethiopia, and she says due to a broken well, people have to embark on a journey just to get some water. Some of the people walked two days to get to the water source, um, and it took about takes about 20 minutes because it's just gravity-fed pipes. It takes about 20 minutes to fill a jerry can, and they were only allowed two jerry cans each. Yeah, and then they would take two days to get back, and then one day rest, and then they'd do it all over again. Ansel, the group that organizes these summer camps, is working hard to raise money in order to repair the well. Knowing just how valuable this well could be for the community, Miss Key decided to turn to her students for help. We're going to be walking to the fire um, house, and we're going to be walking back here and carrying the water we need to use in a day as a representative of what Ethiopia people have to do. Students laced up their boots and for the next hour they hauled as much water as they could carry. Well, people could sponsor them for a flat rate or they could sponsor the kids per liter. So there, we have a tally going on so the kids are going to go back and forth to the school yeah. and then however many liters they brought, we'll send it home with their pledge sheet. So if somebody sponsored them for a dollar a liter and they hauled 10 liters, then they would get $10. So it's kind of a motivator for the kids to keep going even when it gets a little bit hard. But it wasn't all just about the hard work. Underneath all those gallons of water, Ms. Key made sure a few lessons would surface. Maybe help the kids uh, realize how much we take it for granted. You know, we've, we've done graphs and figured out how much water we use in a day. So now we're going to look at how much we hauled and how that compares to how much we actually use in a day. And the kids kind of realize that, yeah, water is something that we do take for granted. As of today, Ms. Key and their students raised just over $1,900, and she says more donations are still coming in. Well done, guys. Let's turn over to regional news now. Last week, we told you about the civil claim that BC Hydro has filed against the individuals camping out in Rocky Mountain Fort. Since then, we got a chance to go visit the camp where a group of Treaty 8 members, land users and farmers are actively stopping clear cutting that's happening on the south bank of the Peace River. Here's a look at the full story. Upon arriving to the camp, it was evident to see that this wasn't your average bush camp. Through donations and hours of labor during their time off from work, people here are taking a peaceful stand for what they believe in. Specifically, they're asking BC Hydro to stop construction while pending trials that challenge their permits come to an end. Art Napoleon, a Treaty 8 member and former chief of Soto Nations, says the people here should not be labeled as extreme protesters. If they spent any time with these people and got to know them, they'd, they'd see these are uh, the salt of the earth types, very respected and respectable uh, ranchers and landowners and farmers and people who have been social workers. We have bloggers, writers, people who work in media. These are not your uh, eco-terrorists. As BC's electric utility, BC Hydro is responsible for figuring out the best way to supply energy to most areas in the province. For them, here in the piece, the answer is simple. Hydroelectric dams are the most cost-effective option. With two already operating along the Peace River, BC's government agrees with them and says large hydroelectric projects are cost-effective because after an upfront cost, they have a low operating cost for more than 100 years and their cost to ratepayers decreases over time. Mark Mears has been using these lands to fish, hunt and camp for over 45 years and he says there are other alternatives that BC Hydro should be paying attention to. Look at Calgary. They, in the last couple of years, they built two cogeneration plants, one right in the middle of Calgary. The city of Calgary has done this themselves. I don't mean a big corporation has done it, but the city of Calgary has done this. EC Hydro has received environmental assessment approvals from the federal and provincial governments after a three-year environmental review, including a joint review panel process. 
However, they have not undergone an independent review by the BC Utilities Commission, as recommended by the Joint Review Panel. People here aren't opposed to the idea of using this land to harness electricity. They just don't think that flooding this valley is the best option. We've had experts that have given opinions on alternatives, greener alternatives. Uh, and so those were all presented at one time or another to Hydro, and Hydro just wouldn't really actually consider it because they believed that what they had in place, they had all their angles covered and they were going to railroad this no matter what. With both sides unable to come to an agreement, 38 members are asking for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to hear what they have to say. A chance for him to show his commitment. He's gone on record as saying, yes, reconciliation with our First Nations is, is important. Put your money where your mouth is and uh, actually it's 2016. Get off your ass and meet with us. <laughs> I'll use his own line. Hey, because it's 2016. In other regional news, the search for a missing Dawson Creek teenager has finally come to an end. Dawson Creek RCMP sent out a release last week saying Madeline White had been missing since January 15th. However, earlier this week, police broke the news that White had been located in Fort St. John. Police say she is safe and sound, but couldn't give us any more details due to Youth and Privacy Act laws. All right. It's time for our weather report now. Let's go outside the station where Robert Springett is waiting to join us. Robert, it's looking pretty nice outside right now. How's it looking for the rest of the weekend? Yeah, thank you very much, Marlon. You're right, it is nice out right now. Uh, the sun was out for most of Friday. As you can see right now, um, some clouds covering the sky, but that's going to be the story for across the Peace region this weekend. We will get some clouds, but we'll also get some sun mixed in here and there. Maybe even a chance of flurries across the Peace region. I'll have the full details when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to the Lion Inn and Suites. It is our pleasure to show you our incredibly beautiful rooms designed for the worker, tourists, and families visiting the Chetwind area. Ken and Lily have hired the very best contractors and searched out the very best furniture and appliances for each room. The Lion has rooms for every need. Select the rooms of your choice and enjoy comfy beds and use their kitchens and appreciate immaculate new bathrooms. You'll be delighted to find washers and dryers for your use, fast Wi-Fi connections, and flat screen TVs for your viewing pleasure. You'll be delighted and always return to the Lion in Chetwin because the rooms are spacious, cuisine tickets to the Red Lion restaurant are given as bonuses, and service is always pleasant and professional. The Lion is located at 5132 46th Avenue Northwest. Call us at 250-788-9990. Call for a reservation today. You wanted it, you got it. Chet TV is happy to bring back Moccasin Flats to its regular programming, and it gets better. My Peace Country Home Pioneers of the Pine River Valley is returning as well, this time with over 30 minutes of bonus features including interviews, archive footage, and music. Chet TV on Bell 655, East Link Channel 40, and on air on Channel 55. Chet TV, your station. From Chet TV's studios in British Columbia, this is Chet TV News with Marlon Gomez. Welcome back to Chet TV News. Now, before the break, we were talking about what the weather's going to look like this weekend. Like I said, there's going to be a mix of sun and cloud for most of this weekend, but when we go into the, our advanced five-day forecast, we're going to see that sun and cloud mix. You're going to hear that I'm repeating that a lot, a mix of sun and cloud, a mix of sun and cloud. Now we'll go into the full details, first looking at Chetwind. Clear skies tonight with a low of minus 5. Saturday will be mainly sunny with a high of plus 2 and a low of minus 9. Sunday, a mix of sun and cloud. Later in the night, we'll see some flurries. High of minus 6 and a low of minus 14. Monday will be chilly, high of minus 10 and a low of minus 14. And on Tuesday, a mix of sun and cloud with a low of minus 21 and a high of minus 8. In Dawson Creek tonight, looking clear, a little windy going into the evening, but that will die down. We expect a low of minus 5. Saturday, mainly sunny with a high of plus 2 and a low of minus 9. Sunday, a mix of sun and cloud with a chance of flurries, low of minus 14 and a high of minus 6. 
Monday, another mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 10 and a low of minus 14. And on Tuesday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 8 and a low of minus 21. Now taking a look at Fort St. John tonight will be clear. Expect things to get a little windy. Those winds will reach a speed of 20 kilometers an hour, low of minus 7. Saturday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 1 and a low of minus 9. Sunday, a mix of sun and cloud with a chance of flurries in the evening, high of minus 6 and a low of minus 14. Monday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 10 and a low of minus 14. On Tuesday, you guessed it, once again, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 8 and a low of minus 21. Taking a look at Grand Prairie, a few clouds in the sky tonight with a high of plus 4 and a low of minus 9. Saturday, we'll see just about it all. Clouds forming in the morning, a chance of flurries in the afternoon, and winds reaching 20 kilometers an hour, low of minus 8 and a high of minus 1. Sunday, a mix of sun and cloud, high of minus 5 to low of minus 13. Monday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 10 and a low of minus 14. And on Tuesday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 7 and a low of minus 21. Finally, in Prince George tonight, cloudy with a 40% chance of flurries, low of minus 3. Saturday, mainly cloudy with a high of plus 1 and a low of minus 5. Sunday, cloudy with a high of minus 1 and a low of minus 5. Monday, a 30% chance of flurries, cloudy all day, high of minus 3 and a low of minus 7. And on Tuesday, cloudy, high of minus 2 and a low of minus 14. So there you have it, Marlin. Across the Peace region, your five-day forecast. Now, if you happen to forget what I told you in your five-day forecast, you don't have access to the internet to check our website, peacefm.ca, on what's in store across the Peace region as far as the weather goes, it's pretty likely that it's going to be a mix of sun and cloud. We're going to send it back to you now. Thanks, Robert. Now it's time for the Peace region sports update. For that, we will go to Matt Nicholson. Thanks, Marlon. Six weekend games in the NWJHL, starting Friday with the Navigators in Dawson Creek taking on the Junior Canucks. Justin Grayeyes is back with the Junior Canucks, but it will still be an uphill battle for Dawson Creek against the Navigators. Also on Friday, the Vipers are in Grand Prairie taking on the JDA Kings. The JDA Kings are a much better team at home than on the road. Look for them to knock off the Vipers. The last game on Friday sees the Huskies in Fairview taking on the Flyers. The Flyers have re-established themselves as the top team in the league. Look for that to continue with a win over the Huskies. Saturday, the Huskies are in Sexsmith taking on the Vipers. The Huskies are a capable team, but with back-to-back -back games and the second one on the road, I think the Vipers have the advantage in this tilt. The Grand Prairie JDA Kings are in Peace River taking on the Navigators. The JDA Kings have pulled off a few upsets this season, but don't look for that to be the case in Peace River. And finally, the Blades are in Fairview taking on the Flyers. The Blades have improved, but not to the level where they can challenge the Flyers this season. Going into the weekend, here's a look at the NWJHL standings. Flyers in first with 52 points, Navigators second, 50 points, followed by the JDA Kings, 35 points, Huskies, 32 points, Vipers, 29 points, Junior Canucks, 10 points, and the Blades still in last place with 8. In the NAMHL, the Northeast BC Yukon Trackers play back-to-back -back games on the road Friday and Saturday against the Big Lakes Thunder. And the Dawson Creek Senior Canucks face Spirit River at home in their last regular season game. This has been your Peace Region Sports Update. Back to you, Marlon. Thanks, Matt. Now to see what events are happening in the Peace Region, we will turn over to Jeff Hill for our community event segment. Jeff is filling in for Tyrep Mondon this week. So Jeff, how's Chetwin treating you so far? Thanks for asking. Chetwin and the entire Peace Region is growing on me real fast. I keep telling everybody that it was just a matter of time that a guy with the last name Hill would find his way out to the mountains eventually. And I couldn't be happier to join the Chet TV family. And another thing that I really like about the community, it's all the events that are happening in the Peace Region. Let me show you. Next on the list is a Junior Canucks game. The boys are taking on the North Peace Navigators on January 29th. The puck drops at 8 p.m. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for kids and seniors. Moving on into February now, the Rec Center is hosting a fitness challenge on February the 1st. This is a great way to stay healthy and spend some time with friends. Admission is free and all participants must have a library card. Call the Rec Center to save your spot. And then on February 3rd, the Junior Canucks battle at home against the Fort St. John Huskies. Puck drop for that one is at 8 p.m. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for the kids and seniors. And our final event is Coffee House. Powder King Resort is hosting an evening full of live music by local artists. The event will be happening on February 6th at 7 p.m. And admission is free. That's all the events we have for you, so get out there and attend as many activities as you can. I'll send it back to you. 
Thanks, Jeff. And local entertainment news, starting next week, the Force will finally awaken for many Star Wars fans here in Chetland. The latest Star Wars movie will be playing at the Rex Theater for an entire week. The Force Awakens was released back in December 18th and so far has made close to $900 million, which isn't too bad considering the production budget was $200 million. The film is just over two hours long and will be playing every night at 8 p.m. And as usual, Cole Pops will do his movie review next week, so stay tuned for that. And finally, it's now time for our weekly book review from Pine Tree Books. For that, we will go to Station General Manager Leo Sobolski. Hi, my name is Leo Sobolski, and you are hearing a nationwide book report from the studios of Peace FM and Chet TV. Yesterday I was on national television on CPAC doing a review for the CRTC, and one of the commissioners mentioned that he saw the book report. Well, if you're one of those people that are looking uh, forward to spring, these book reports are going to get much more exciting. You will be able to hear about spring and all sorts of wonderful things. So I'm going to be starting today with books that we've brought in and I have a couple left over. So if you have time, hop over to our Peace FM Chet TV studios and get a hold of these books. The first one is from The Teacher in Fort St. John, A Place to Stand, The Tale of the Peace River Country. I only have one book left and uh, it's interesting it's all about being along the peace river over the last 30 years interesting appropriate good book a wonderful read second book i'm going to be talking about is we only have one left i got a hold of shirley matheson and she said the book isn't in print go to the museum in hudson hope or go to bell's news well i've called and they're all sold out so I got this through the Rare Books Library for sale, and uh, you can come in. This is our last copy. I'm going to get more, but I've got a secret. It's wonderful. It's very appropriate. It talks about all the dams. So this is a very interesting, appropriate book at this time of year. Now, if you're going anywhere for the spring, and you want a book to read in the airport or on your holidays and you want to chuckle we have three books that are low cost but chuckle books books that's really good uh, the first one is about the mob hit on my grandmother's dog excellent the short stories so if you're in an airport you can read one of these short stories between flights or on your flight excellent book it's a fun read the second book written by the same auth set of authors is mugged by a moose appropriate it looks great if you have a time buy this book and you can read the short stories while you're traveling excellent book the next book i like and we've almost sold out we'll get some more once uh, it's all sold out never trust a smiling bear and that's true if you ever trusted a smiling bear, you're probably an unfortunate bear of a few lost limbs. So read this book, Never Trust a Smiling Bear. Excellent read. Those three books are all books of short stories. Now let's talk springtime. You can almost hear the birds. I'm listening and yes, I can almost hear them. And the two books and the third one I'm going to talk about, I've had to order because we've lost We've sold them all. This is a good book. Keep this book in your car, truck, on your ATV. It's the Smithsonian Field Guide to Birds. And what I like about this book is it has, oh wow, look at that. Just wonderful. Turns right to it and all, it's uh, dealing with all the birds from around here. Excellent book. The pictures are amazing. Plus there's really great descriptions. Now what you can do to your children every night is you can take this book and you can take one bird and you can read about the bird. The next day you can release your children into the wild 
and they can go find a bird that you've been talking about. Just make sure that it's a bird from our area because your children would really be confused if they went out and never found a bird you talked about. Lots and lots of birds here and in Chetwood. This is a good book, Smithsonian Field Guide to the Birds. Now the world has gone to the birds in many ways. There's a report out on what do people like. Well, birds are number one. People like looking for birds. And this one is probably a, has a little bit more scientific basics than that one. That one has great, great detail and great drawings. But this one is incredible because it covers pretty well every bird in Northeast BC. So this is good. We had the book called Birds of Northeast British Columbia. I've had to reorder it because we had a queue. The queue of lines was right out the door and we've sold them all. So if you want one, email traffic, T-R-A-F-F-I-C, traffic at peacefm.c and saying the world is going crazy with birds and order a bird book with Laura. So this week we have a lot of books. Peterson's Guide, excellent book, I like it. The Smithsonian, excellent, great pictures, great reading each and every night. Never Trust a Smiling Bear, short stories, Mugged by a Moose, which is possibly very true. Short stories again, and of course, The Mob Hit on My Grandmother's Dog, excellent read. So there's two more books though that I want you to not forget. This was Our Valley by Shirley Matheson and Earl Poland. Excellent book. And of course, A Place to Stand, Hearthrobber Fiction. So this is your report from Pine Tree Books at the Peace FM Chet's TV Studios. That's all the time that we have for today. For Chet TV News, I'm Marlon Gomez. Thanks for joining us. Chet TV is owned and operated by the Chetwin Communication Society. You can find us on Channel 655 on Bell, East Link Channel 40, or on Air Channel 55. Chet TV, your station. My name is Linda Kearns. I am the manager of Natural Springs Golf Course. My mom and dad, Mario Nicole Plurd, purchased the Natural Springs Golf Course in 1999 and embraced it as a dream. Together with my husband, John and I, the Natural Springs Golf Course has become a passion and a lifestyle. As a family, our dream of green also included our two children, Vanessa and Jason, who were raised at the course. Both kids now work or have worked at the course and are off to college. It is now our time to pass our dream to another family. As you can see, the course has wonderful advantages, well-taken greens, groomed fairways, and a beautiful setting 15 minutes from Chetwin on the Sakanka River. Swans, geese, ducks, and many other wildlife visit this pristine, beautiful setting. Our parents purchased the course in 1999 from another family who built the course in 1992. The course boosts a nine-hole golf course, regular and loyal golfers with season passes, rental carts, a certified kitchen, and our golfing season runs from May 1st to September 30th. We invite you to visit us and consider purchasing the land, the buildings, and the equipment and all the assets of Natural Springs Golf Course. A total of 180 acres are for sale. The course occupies 83 acres. Potential for cross-country skiing, an RV park, storage spaces for equipment, a full-time restaurant, and much more can make Natural Springs a 12-month wonderland and a business for the right family. Our goal is to pass our dream to a family or corporation who will expand and add the beauty of Natural Springs. Call me at 250-788-3944 or 250-401-1147 or email at nsgolf at talus.net. The location where you can find Natural Springs Golf Course is 7847 Highway 29 South. Thank you.
When the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor, they upset our thinking about a great many things, including Alaska. The great Japanese air and naval base at Paramushiro was only 750 miles from Attu. Attu was only 1,200 miles from the mainland of Alaska. And Japs in Alaska would be a direct threat to the west coast of America and also to the interior. With Canada's consent, the United States War Department decided to build a military highway from Rails End at Dawson Creek, British Columbia, to Fairbanks, Alaska, to link up and supply these airfields and to provide emergency access to Alaska for troops and materiel. Tourism Dawson Creek official film The Signal Corps and Chet TV presents a one-hour special on the new tour of the Mile Zero Alaska Highway that is coming to Dawson Creek. Watch a presentation on the new tour, explore the routes, and hear the experts highlight what to look forward to. Watch a short movie on the highway produced by Signal Corps and learn about some of the books that chronicle the construction of the Alcan Highway available at the Pine Tree Bookstore in Chetwind. Stay tuned to Chet TV Channel 40 on Eastlink, 655 on Bell and 55 on Air. It's more than a medical clinic in the community of Chetwind. The new Chetwind Medical Clinic and Wellness Center is a bold and innovative step to secure effective and sustainable medical services, including doctors and nurse practitioners for and in the community of Chetwind. The building concept was recommended in a report called the Preliminary Health Services Review and Assessment for Chetwind and Surrounding Area, funded by Northern Health and delivered by the author Brian Spooner. It recommended that the building be a joint project of the Mayor and Council and Northern Health to attract and to retain doctors and medical persons. The building concept engaged the entire medical community, the mayor and council, and members of the community. It demonstrates how a committed community works together effectively for a common purpose. The District of Chetwind Mayor and Council, Northern Health, and medical staff jointly developed the plans for the clinic. The District of Chetwind, with contributions from the individual members of the community, the Northern Development Initiative Trust, corporations, the Peace River Regional District, and from municipal funds, jointly financed the construction of the new clinic and expanded it to include a wellness center. The building was built from September 2014 to April 2015. It is the setting for medical staff, including doctors, nurse practitioners, public health nurses, home support staff, and mental health counselors. They meet patients of all ages from the community of Chetwind and its surrounding area, including the West Moberly First Nations and Salto First Nations. The new center is unique because the municipality and Northern Health took the challenge to develop an appropriately sized primary care clinic and freed up doctors to practice medicine rather than spend valuable time, energy and funds in running a clinic. The time for a new clinic was critical since the old clinic was in need of repair, was not wheelchair accessible and was poorly laid out for medical office purposes. The call for a new clinic was loud and clear, but no private corporation stepped forward. The decision to build a new public clinic and wellness center is a genuine milestone for our community. The ultimate goal is to have at least four doctors working jointly in unison with nurse practitioners to provide quality medical service in the community. This will eliminate the burnout of medical personnel and ensure prompt and adequate medical service. We have a new, modern clinic and a welcoming community are the key words in further negotiations with new doctors and new nurses. It's more than a medical center in the community of Chetwind. It is an example of how a community works together to attract and retain medical services to ensure the future of the community of Chetwind and its surrounding area. It's the new Chetwind Medical Clinic and Wellness Center. Innovative, bold, and welcoming. You wanted it, you got it. Chet TV is happy to bring back Moccasin Flats to its regular programming, and it gets better. My Peace Country Home, Pioneers of the Pine River Valley, is returning as well, this time with over 30 minutes of bonus features including interviews, archive footage, and music. Chet TV on Bell 655, East Link Channel 40, and on air on Channel 55. Chet TV, your station.